Welcome back to Pace Immigration, paceimmigration.com, on the podcast and on our YouTube channel, talking with immigration lawyer Andy Semichuk. Andy, good to see you. Good to see you, Sean. So I was looking at your Forbes column. Your latest one just recently came out, and it talks about foreign investors stalled by E2 visa consular interviews. And before we get in depth into what the problems are with those consular interviews, I thought maybe we could give people an idea of what the E2 is. So this video and this podcast is aimed towards people who are already in the process of getting or obtaining an E2 visa, but also people that might be thinking about one. Andy, take us through the E2. Right. So E2 visa, that's for people, for example, who might be buying a business, let's say a hotel, gas station, convenience store, things like that in the United States, or planning to set up their own business. It's an ideal visa. It's a work visa. That's for five years, renewable indefinitely. And uh, you can start your own company and get going from there or buy a franchise, anything of that nature. Right. There there is one caveat to that, and it's not actually not a very big one in in the sense that there's a lot of countries. Uh, The the United States has to have an E2 visa treaty with that country. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. And I see you've uh, listed a number of them, in particular, the USMCA, NAFTA, Agreement covers Canada and Mexico. That's uh, one that we work with a lot, but there are a lot of other countries such as the ones you've listed. Right. And people can go to travel.state.gov for that full list. And then I've got the nuts and bolts here. Just if people, if they're watching the video on the YouTube channel, they can hit pause and kind of take a look at it. Uh, but right. one one thing that did strike me, Andy, if you could go over for people, no no direct path to green card and no dual intent. What's that dual intent mean? Okay, dual intent. Uh, The issue there is if someone's coming to the United States and wants to be there for a while and at the same time apply for a green card, in certain instances, that's not possible. Under this E-2 visa, you cannot adjust your status inside the United States from E-2 status to green card. Uh, You have to figure out another path. But there are other paths, and we can talk about that in more detail if someone wants to uh, talk to me or... Uh, check out what what is available. Okay. The one thing about the E2, we talk about the E2 a lot because it is actually a great visa. It's a five-year visa. It's renewable. It gives a lot of flexibility for people to come in and out of the United States. They can run their own business. Everything sounds great and actually was kind of going great, wasn't it? And then it ran into some problems. And I'm going to quote you here from your Forbes article. Quote, to get an E2 work visa, the foreign investor has to go through an interview at a U.S. consulate abroad. No interview means no work visa. Interviews are taking inordinate times to arrange now, sometimes a year or more, sometimes an unspecified period of time. What's going on? Well, the pandemic came in and hit us hard, and people are lined up at the consulates to get these visas, and they're limited in their staff, and some people are sick, etc. So we got a backlog, and we got to wait through the backlog for you know our, our clients to get to the, to the point where they can go through the interview so they can get the work visa. Right. I, I took a couple of highlights from your article, the U.S. Uh, Customs and Border Service, policies and procedures need updating. Have they, you know, we're hearing a lot about this, even with like EB-5 and things, that things just aren't being renewed, things aren't going forward. Um, what are the chances of uh, the Customs and Border people updating their policies and procedures? Well, I think, uh, actually, if they think about it, uh, chances should be pretty good. Look, a guy applies for an E-2 visa, and he's in a waiting line, and he can prove he's in a waiting line, but he's delayed because of the pandemic, and he's bought a business. He's made an investment in the United States because that's what you have to do to get an interview. So, for example, I have clients who have bought uh, convenience stores, hotels, you know, other uh, other investments, uh, the money's already in the United States. He's got they got people working for them and so on. But they are tra- challenged by the need to go down and look after their business. Now, one way of doing that is just go as a business visitor. But the challenge we're having is that at the port of entry, at least for Canadians and also for others from other countries. They're saying, well, look, you've been down there for six months. This is a temporary visa, and now we're going to impose a six-month waiting time for you to go back again. Well, business can't wait six months. Uh, but what they should be doing, in my opinion, they can do with the, uh, the rules that they have right there is if a guy shows up at the port of entry and says, hey, look, here's a copy of my 
submitted application. I'm in a waiting line. I'm going to get an interview, but it's taking a lot of time at the U.S. consulate, let's say in Toronto, for example. Let me in for a year so I can look after my business. I'll watch what I do. I'm not going to get involved hands-on, but I am going to look after my business, uh, talk to people, uh, sign checks wherever needed, uh, hire people that if, if we're, we're short on people, things of this nature. And there's a lot of things you can do as a business visitor, and they're included in my article if anybody wants to take a look, that the person can do. Uh, to me, that's a reasonable request. Give the guy a one-year visa, time enough for him to wait out the period so he can get the E2 visa at the uh, U.S. consulate. That would be my solution. Uh, at the moment, they're still not uh, quite tuned into that, but I think they should tune in. And if they well, think that, about it, I think it's a reasonable request. It does sound like a reasonable request. I mean, is that a change in, in policy or is that just a change in procedure? Is it up to the border official to make that call or do they have to wait for somebody higher up to pass some new legislation or something? Amazingly, amazingly, what they're doing right now is not actually a past rule. What they're saying is six months. That's it. You can't stay any longer. Now you have to wait six months before you go back into the United States. There's no such rule like that. None. It's, there's wow. no written rule. It's just a custom they've adopted. Now, since they custom, you know, adopted this custom, which is not a rule, they can also not adopt the custom and follow the rules. And one of the rules that you can follow is you can issue a visa for up to one year, a business visa. And I'm proposing that they consider issuing such one-year visas to people who are waiting in line for their interviews. What are your thoughts on, I mean, everything else has gone Zoom crazy. I mean, we're talking on this right now. In the old days, we'd be sitting side by side talking about this. Now we can talk immediately. What are your thoughts on getting with the times in terms of technology and doing these interviews uh, by video, especially if all the other paperwork checks out? No, there's a good idea. And uh, why the U.S. Uh, consulate is not adopting that strategy uh, is a you know is a mystery. However, it may have to do with security c concerns. Maybe they need to see someone in person. For I mean, I'm guessing, but maybe that is the reason why they're there. Or maybe it's just you know, old school dinosaur thinking mm -hmm. in terms of using uh, modern technology. What's the big deal? You interview the guy on online or the woman online. It's hardly any different from uh, being in person. Um, we're doing it uh, in other all, all kinds of... My son, who's a real estate lawyer in Manhattan and runs billion-dollar deals, is doing the deals over uh, online. They don't see wow. anybody. They're signing everything online. If they can do that, why can't we uh, implement a similar policy for interviews at the U.S. consulates? I think sure. it's time they did. Yeah, uh, your son's not going to have to worry about me with a Zoom call for the billion-dollar deal, by the way. I've got uh, the challenges for Canadians I highlighted. Just maybe go over that because Canadians are kind of – in fact, I'm willing to guess a lot of Canadians wouldn't even think that they need to go to a U.S. consulate for an interview before even doing this because Canadians are kind of used to getting to the border uh, through NAFTA or just that six-month visitor stuff. They get a lot of leeway, but in this case, they don't. So what are the challenges for Canadians now? This is the one and only time where they have to go through the U.S. consulate in terms of business visas. So a guy buys a hotel, for example, in the United States, puts in two, three, four hundred thousand dollars, and he wants to go run the hotel, but he needs the visa. The visa, the E2 visa is like a key. It opens the door for him to travel in and out of the country. That's why he needs it. So we file an application for him. Now he's in a waiting line. The, the waiting line's a year long. So what's he going to do? He can't wait a year. The business requires him. So he goes down as a business visitor, which he can do easily as a Canadian, just go across the border with a passport. That'll give him six months. So for six months, he's good. And maybe he can't do hands-on work, but he can do, you know, like he can meet people. He can talk to people. He can sign checks or whatever, you know, broad sort of supervision of the business is okay. Uh, that's an okay reason for going down as a business visitor to the United States. Six months expires. Now he's got to renew his visa. So he comes back up to Canada. He wants to go in again. Uh-oh, no. They stop him at the border because they're applying this out 
I don't know, this mystery rule that says you cannot stay in the United States physically for more than six months if you're a Canadian going down. They tell him you have to wait six months to go down again. What does he do now? He's got a business running in the U.S. and he can't supervise it. He can't do anything about it. He's got to wait it out. So my solution would be, look, give the guy a break. Give him a one-year visa. If he can show that you've got uh, your application in line at the consulate and he's backlogged because of pandemic, okay, give the guy a one-year visa so he can be in the U.S. looking after his business until such time as he's called for his interview. Then he can come back to Canada, go through the interview, get the key, the E-2 visa, and now everybody's happy. Andy, does this affect people that already have an E-2? It runs out after five months. There isn't another interview before at the end of that five, or excuse me, five years. There isn't another interview at the end of that five years, is there? There is, but uh, they're smart about that one. They've agreed, in, in most instances, they waive the interview. They don't okay. need to. They've, they've met the guy already. They know all the details. So there's no problem for those people. They, they've got to do something. I mean, I'm online uh, with the Twitter and all the rest of the Twitter. How old do I sound there? And with, with Twitter and Facebook and things. And there's a lot of people quite angry about uh, the EB-5 uh, issue with the regional center program. Uh, not being renewed and people are saying you know i've put some money down and i want to see some results and now with the e2 there's going to be a lot more people that are in a bind with their money locked up in the u.s no yes i've written two articles one on e2 the other on eb5 same story my money's there but i'm not there i want to be there but i can't get there why backlogs uh processing backlogs and they're they're not effectively addressing the the backlogs yeah i like your i like your one-year visa extension idea and i also like the idea of getting with the times and starting to get a lot of this stuff online with video i mean video I is a great idea why can't they do the interviews by video they should i agree okay andy that's great uh if people need your help they can contact contact you a samachuk at pacelawfirm.com we'll see you next time on uh, youtube or on the podcast bye andy bye thanks john